What up? All right, I'm working on my introductions, and uh, I probably will not do that one again. Today, I want to talk about creating a kick drum on Massive. And this applies for, you know, a lot of synths, but I'm going to use Massive today. A problem that I have is sometimes I get distracted browsing for samples to find the perfect kick drum for the track that I'm working on. And the problem with that is, well, that I get distracted and sometimes I might not even find what I'm looking for. I think it's better to just create your own kick, kick drum and just, you know, know what you're... I don't know, if you know, like getting exactly what you want. So I have a little uh, track here that I just created for this exercise. And I'm going to play a little bit. All right. So I already made two kick drums, and I'm just going to kind of show them to you. Here's one. And here's another, slightly different. Cool. And now I'm gonna show you how I did, how I did, dude. This uh, English as a second language it is never gonna hide from me. It just comes up like, Shoop. anyway. So, uh, yeah. See, like I'm now distracted because I, I did. Who cares? All right, so I'm going to create an instrument track, and I'm going to select Massive from my instruments. And uh, basically what I did is right here I have a, a MIDI track of the note C, okay? And at some point, at one point, I just go to quarter notes. You'll see what I'm talking about. And this, this should, let me just solo this. Check it out. Wait, you can't hear that. Now you'll be able to hear it. To hear it. Check it out. Okay. So we have this annoying sound and we need to start making uh, a cool kick drum. Let's just solo. That's the sound. And hold on, let me talk while I create this. Uh, I need to create a channel for myself, for my voice, so you can hear the video. That's better. Maybe I'll make a, a tutorial one day of how to make these tutorial videos. Anyway, so, uh, so we have that sound, as you can hear, and that's probably pretty pretty annoying and loud. So I'm gonna turn it down. And the first thing I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on massive, and I'm gonna dis deactivate all my oscillators except for oscillator one. And I like to use envelope one for amp modulation. So don't worry about that. It's not a big deal. That only matters if you're going to start using envelope, envelope 4, which is what was there originally. So, we have our MIDI file, and we're going to turn this amp down, so there shouldn't be any noise. So check it out. What I'm turning down. Right? That's like, as if it was like your guitar amp or whatever, and you turn the volume down. And I'm going to select an envelope to control that amp. And what an envelope does is basically, if you click on the envelope, it gives it a shape over time. And to activate that, I have to click on this one here and hold it. And that's what I'm doing right now. And then move your mouse up or down. See, I'm going to go up 100%. And then I'm going to, and then this envelope should affect the sound of that note. So check it out. If I. I change the attack see it like swells in because the attack is kind of slower as you can see like it's just smooth 
But we'll leave that at about, I don't know, like 5%. You don't want it at zero because then you'll get some like clicky sounds that are kind of annoying. The other thing is uh, the level. Th so the other thing is that the next thing is the decay. How do you want that sound to fade out? You know, so check out the extremes. I'm going to turn the level down. We, that's kind of like the sustain. We don't want that in, in drum sound. So super fast to. Okay. And I'm going to select a decay of about 65%. And uh, yeah, for now, that, that should work. The next thing is we want to mess with the pitch of this node. Maybe let's just go down to see what happened. Oh. I want it really low. So about negative 18 is good. So now, remember how we the envelope changes that amp? I want an envelope to mess with the pitch as well. So if I have a pitch like ah, I want it to go down like ah, okay, but super fast. You'll see. So I dropped envelope 2 on the pitch um, uh, envelope thingy here, you know, I'm going to skip the, like the techie names, whatever. I, I don't care about that. Put the two here and then same thing, click and hold and let's uh, move our mouse up. I don't know, to like 48 and same thing, level at zero for the decay of this envelope, envelope number two. And then let's move that decay to like something quick, like 30% maybe. Oh, yeah. So check it out. See? Okay. All right. So we're getting closer to a kick drum, I believe. And the next thing we need to do is, uh, so we have this like serial parallel... I'm not going to go into the details, you know, serial, I guess this one filter parallel is like both together or you could go extreme. I mean, this is kind of a complicated, I'm just going to go up and select filter one and I just like a low pass four filter, which just goes really deep. As you can see, check it out. It's already affecting the sound. I'm going to go even something like that, which you can. Make sure you're wearing either headphones or you have speakers, like maybe with a, with a subwoofer or something to hear this stuff. So let's say cut off around 40%. And we're going to use, guess what? Another envelope, envelope number three. And drop it on the little box here. And just give it like 90% or something, 100% just to start. Same thing. No, no level on the decay. And let's see what, what happens. Okay. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this should. Oh, yeah. Let me uh, make sure that that doesn't happen again. I'm busy. So now we're getting like a pretty intense kick drum. Okay. So that's a lot of body. That's probably going to overwhelm a mix. So the next thing we want is some attack. And really, you probably want more attack than you think you do. And and then our ears kind of perceive those low frequencies. We don't need that much of them. So the way that I'm going to do an attack for this, for this example is just to add noise. But this time, let's just remember the filter thing. If I'm here, I'm kind of like working with this filter. If I'm down here, I'm working with this fil filter. I'm going to put it in the middle because now, okay, now I'm going to, the, the noise, I want it to be affected only by the second filter. And then this uh, oscillator, I want it to be affected only by the first filter. So, yeah. So I'm going to add that noise. Oh, yeah. Cool. But really, I don't want my amp like that. I'm going to leave it at zero and select another envelope to control this and this I want that noise like think about a kick drum like that initial hit like do do that kind of like tiny attack thing you want that to be really short that's what I just did with my mouth like a little doo, you know so I'm going to make it very short decay 
and uh, starting with everything here. Okay, the color. Yeah, that's it. And then just control the amount, you know? You probably. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe less. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty intense right there. Um, another thing you could do, which I'm not finding, well, you could add, you could EQ it for, um, like a, a deeper sound. Um, the first thing I like to do is kind of find the frequency that sounds like boxy. So I'm going to boost this all the way. This is controlling this frequency and I'm going to search for that frequency. So. Like around there, bring that down. See, a little bit of low shelf, so that's gonna, you know, that's gonna bring up a lot of the bo bottom end. It's good to listen while you using massive because it's not like an accurate number. You, you know, like you, I don't really know what I'm boosting here, so I have to listen to it. That's a lot. And maybe sell high shelves to see. And you can experiment with like the noise type. So maybe, maybe that's better. Maybe this is better. Oh, that's nice. That's like more subtle. I like that. Yeah. All right. Okay, so maybe I don't want so much bass. Maybe something like this. Okay, the next thing is, there's usually reverb on kicks and I would do that after, but if you only had massive and you wanted to do everything on massive, then you would probably go with a small reverb and, you know, like a small room. I mean, let's check it out. Small room. Density. Density kind of makes spreads it out like a, a class of stereo field. So maybe that would be good if you're, you know, if you want to keep your nice, uh, your kick in the middle and the the ornaments on the sides. So just a little bit. And then what else can we add here? If we, I mean, less is more is better, but you know. Let's just check it out. Um, maybe, maybe some hard clipper. Let's see what this does. Oh yeah, dude. That's a. Then we can get it like even more cut. Let me see. No, 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 no. Let's check out this envelope again. That reverb is like too much. Smaller without see it sounds like MIDI or you know and then it's like immediately it's like very subtle realism when you add that reverb. Let's hear it with the track. Uh, I'll just put everything. So I mean every time I kind of get it different because you know I like these settings are very uh every every little thing you do really affects the sound. So I suggest you save if you like something you just uh go here save as I already you know kick drum 2 cuz I already saved one as kick drum so and that's it that's how you make a kick drum on on massive. I think this is a better way to do stuff because you end up with an authentic sound that you created and as opposed to some sample that you know you might hear in someone else's i mean it's not better it's just different i like it better so i think i'm talking too much at this point i hope this was helpful and uh 
Stay tuned for more posts. I'm going to be doing this every day. All right, guys. Lay is.